son Stephen's um, he's, he's 22 now um, he's he's got severe autism um, and severe learning difficulties he sort of functions at a sort of five to six year old level um, and um, he lives on on his own with me um, we live in a flat in, in Uxbridge um, I suppose what happened to the was our, our nightmare began um, it was the day before New Year's Eve in 2009 um, S Stephen always finds Christmas a bit difficult to manage because his whole life's sort of based on routines and um, so we'd had a difficult time the week before Christmas Stephen's so okay Christmas Day Boxing Day he, he can cope with that um, but then his sort of anxiety sort of cranks up again after Christmas um, until all the New Year routines kick in again and unfortunately that year I had flu um, and I've been struggling for a couple of days trying to sort of manage Stephen on my own um, and at that point Stephen had been going to a, a respite um, house in, in Hillingdon he'd been going there for a, one night a fortnight for the previous two years um, so I phoned the manager um, one Wednesday afternoon and said look I've got the flu um, do you have a bed for Stephen for, for a couple of days so the plan was when Stephen left home that day that he was going to his normal respite place with his normal uh, support workers and stay until the, the Saturday and he would be coming home on the Saturday. Um, next thing, the following day, New Year's Eve, the social worker phoned me up first thing in the morning, um, said she wanted to come and see me. And she reported that the staff at the unit had had a difficult night with Stephen. And she was proposing that they move Stephen to a, what's called a positive behaviour unit, um, not far from us. Um, and yeah, and a proposal was also that he stay there for a couple of weeks. It was always put, it was put to me, you know, give you a chance to recharge your batteries, Mark. Um, so I, I regret it bitterly now, but I think that's the mistake I made. Um, I, I went along with that. Um, but the, even then, the plan was that Stephen would come home within two weeks. Um, problem was because. Um, the move was unexpected for him and because he didn't really want to be there and for people with autism where routine is so important um, his his behaviour became very difficult very very quickly and um, where we were getting sort of a handful of incidents at home um, they were kind of beginning to log 20 odd incidents a week um, so very very quickly within the space of a couple of weeks the whole thing escalated to Hillingdon believing that Stephen's behaviour was too challenging for him to be at home and um, needed to stay there indefinitely. Um, and that was that was the, the, the kind of block we, we got stuck into for the next two or three months. Their position being Stephen needs to be here so we can assess him. My position being that where he should be at home, um, his behaviour will change dramatically. Um, if he's allowed to come home, my my feelings. I was I was desperate, really. Um, I couldn't believe how um, they'd always encouraged me to seek respite if I was unwell or if there was a problem at home. And the kind of first time that I'd I'd asked for anything above the normal um, arrangement, I suddenly found myself in a situation where I wasn't getting him back. Um, it just felt terrifying. Um, Stephen, as I say, his behaviour was was pretty you know awful at the, at the time but for me that's just a, a sign of how ang anxious and how, how frightened he is um, he doesn't kind of tend to lash out for no reason um, for him his challenging behavior is always a, a sign to me that he's really really anxious about something well Stephen was at this positive behavior unit for about three months um, and then um, one thing that we discovered when we went to court, um, which neither Stephen nor I were talk, told, told about at the time, was that the council were planning to move him away um, a lot sooner than they actually told us. Um, there were minutes of a professionals meeting from the beginning of April where um, there were four action points in, in, in the in the minutes of the meeting. One was that um, Stephen would not be allowed to come home permanently. Two, they would look for alternative places for him to live. Three, Mr Neary must not be told of these arrangements. And um, fourthly, um, to consider a deprivation of liberty authorisation. So that was all in, in the air anyway. Um, but I think what escalated it was one, one Sunday afternoon, middle of um, April 2010, Stephen escaped from the positive behaviour unit. He got outside um, and 
I don't think anyone will ever know exactly what happened that day because there was no staff around. It was just Stephen and this man who he bumped into in the road. And um, the following day I was phoned by the manager of the Positive Behaviour Unit to say they were um, authorising the first seven-day urgent deprivation liberty order. I'd never heard of, of them at the time. Um, so within the first week they served the first um, order. Um, which was, uh, I think, for two months. Um, I read all the paperwork and um, Stephen had a best interest assessment um, as part of the authorisation. Yeah, I knew Stephen should have had a, a, an advocate at the time, um, but I think there must have been a breakdown in communication between Hillingdon and, and whoever they approached to be the advocate, um, because I was told Stephen wasn't entitled to one. And um, over the course of the year, four more dolls were served. Um, each time I met the best interest assessor I asked her about um, getting an advocate um, but we never actually got one until um, November. We were just about to be served the first, the fourth um, doll and um, I'd made a complaint by this point about the lack of advo advocacy um, and then all of a sudden one day I think Hillingdon must have contacted Power um, because all of a sudden one day I got a phone call from an advocate called Scylla um, she arranged to come and see me so we met um, in, in, in my flat for a couple of hours and she, I gave her all the background to, to Stephen's case um, she then went and met the people at the positive behaviour unit she went and met Stephen, met the, the social worker and around about that time we were due to meet the fourth best interest assessor um, Stephen's doll was coming up for renewal um, so she agreed to come along to the meeting with the best interest assessor with me um, and, and Scylla was fairly confident that we, would, we could stop the, fir the fourth doll being served um, I kind of knew Hiddington's position by this point um, that that would be easier said than done um, so we met the, the best interest assessor. As expected, they served the fourth order. Um, Scylla then came with me to a meeting to meet the, the managers from the social care team who, who were involved in the decision. Um, but that didn't really get us anywhere as well. Um, so it was after that meeting with the managers that Scylla and I met again and she said, really court cool, is the only answer um, open to us now. Um, and from then it moved really, really quickly. So I think it was about three weeks after I met Scylla um, that we actually got a solicitor. Um, and then three weeks after getting the solicitor, Stephen was home. Um, he was home almost a year to the day that he, um, he went away. So we went back to court in February and the judge decided it should be a permanent order. It was in Stephen's best interest to be at home. And the official solicitor who'd been acting on Stephen's behalf um, was also pushing for um, a judicial inquiry over Hillington's actions for the whole year that, that Stephen had been away. So we then had to go back to court again in, in May, and that was a week-long inquiry. Um, and ultimately the judge decided that um, all four deprivation liberty orders that had been served throughout the year were unlawful. Um, and that it had never been in Stephen's best interest to, to be kept away from his home. Um, so that was an enormous relief when, when, when the judge delivered his judgment. Because um, because although I'd, I'd never kind of sort of doubted my opinion, uh, my belief in what was best for Stephen, um, I've been quite kind of lonely, um, trying to battle against these sort of committees of people. Um, and to have Scylla and then the, the court experts come on board and to say, yeah, well, this is what is in Stephen's best interest, was did kind of feel vindicated, I suppose.